So my name is Nate Holliday, co-founder, CEO of Space and Time. Um, really excited to be here. This is my first time in Barcelona, um, second time at SmartCon. Uh, I love the energy around SmartCon. This year, it feels like it's a lot bigger. It feels like there's more people here, more developers building, and so really excited to spend the day with you. <clears throat> Space and Time is a decentralized data warehouse. One of the things that we're focusing on is building a verifiable compute layer for the future. Together with Chainlink, Space and Time is enabling new, broader, more smart, data-driven smart contracts for the future, being able to verify what's happening off-chain with what's happening on-chain, being able to solve the issues where trust database and systems off-chain no longer work for the future of business process. It's no secret that the world is moving from a trust to a verify world. We're seeing that blockchains are continuing to scale, that they're starting to be more complex, that we're starting to get more users and blockchains all throughout the world. We see businesses that are looking to build more verifiable projects. We see large banks that are looking to build decentralized services around blockchain, techno blockchain technology. <clears throat> we're seeing that tamperable black box backends, they're no longer supportive of a verifiable future of what people are hoping to build in the future. But the challenges that we're seeing across the world is that blockchain technology, obviously, isn't compatible at enterprise scale and with data infrastructure and services. One of the things that I think everybody notices is that smart contracts today right, need to become much smarter. We need to be able to connect off-chain systems to smart contracts to scale that business process. Smart contracts today are limited in size. They're limited in compute. Blockchains today can't even ask simple questions about their own chains with their own smart contracts. And so we need to be able to take the business process that sits off-chain and databases all over the world and to be able to connect those to smart contracts. One of the reasons that I think we're all here today and one of the reasons we're really excited to build within Web3 is because of Chainlink. We're here today because of Chainlink's success. Chainlink's changed the world in off-chain compute, being able to connect off-chain data services directly to smart contracts to provide tamper-proof and capabilities for blockchain technology all over the world. There's a reason that Space and Time decided to build within the build program for Chainlink and to build in the ecosystem of Chainlink. Now, as we think about just blockchain technology and the data ecosystem as it's evolved over a period of time, you have blockchains, right? You have decentralized general ledgers that are able to be transparent, verifiable. You have Chainlink that's enabling off-chain compute to be able to join with on-chain services, right? Today, you're able to have things like uh, sports data, uh, climate data, right? Price feeds, things that have multiple data sources being able to be delivered through a consensus mechanism to be able to deliver all that data to a smart contract, and you're able to have verifiable compute around off-chain data services. Chainlink's brought us the ability to have uh, functions, right? So now we can go connect to data services all over the world and be able to build it into our applications, into our business process, in order for us to have more use cases come to the blockchain and Web3 overall. If we think about CCIP, right, solving a huge need in the industry where people continue to get hacked and bridges continue to fail, we now have interoperability and connectivity that we can trust. When we think about the world databases that sit out there, most of the world's data sit in centralized databases. I would argue that maybe 99% of the world's data sits in centralized databases. These are point solutions. These are silo solutions. If you went to a chief technology officer of a major video game or a major bank, and you said, look, I understand you have databases. I understand that you have data warehouses. But in order, us, in order for us to trust that database, we need you to replicate that not only multiple times, but we need you to replicate that data across different types of vendors and different types of database technologies. Uh, they throw you out of the office. They say, data is very expensive to operate, and we're trying to drive the cost of data down 
rather than replicate our centralized silo databases more and more so we can draw consensus on these. And so the real question for us and the work that we're doing at Space and Time is how do you prove that centralized data sources are tamper-proof? How do you prove that nobody's manipulating that data? How do you build applications on a legacy technology that sits within Web2 that makes it easy to connect to blockchain technology, to smart contracts all over the world as we build out this new verifiable future for, for data services. One of the things that Space and Time is focused on is building this ZK compute layer. In order for those centralized databases to be trusted, three things have to be true. Number one is we have to be able to prove the origin of that data or the source of that data. Where is this data coming from and can I trust it? If it's coming from a blockchain, can we trust the actual data that's coming from the indexers? If it's coming from a third party, can we ensure that we can prove, for example, that data coming from NASDAQ in a financial model is always coming from NASDAQ, that it's not being spoofed, right? that somebody hasn't manipulated the actual data feeds you know, for personal gain or for, for gain of, of a bad actor? Uh, and the third one is, can we actually prove that the actual computation, when we think about combining origination of data or source of data, when we think about the actual data storage in the database and then the computation of that data, the question is, is we need to be able to prove that during runtime that actually it's running as expected, that something hasn't changed during the process. And so for us to build the ZK compute layer to take the world's data that sits vastly off chain and be able to connect it to automated business process where you don't have human intermediation, these three things have to be true. This is why we built Proof of SQL. Proof of SQL is a novel ZK in order to verify computation of data, storage of data, and origination or source of data to become a standard and a verifiable compute layer for databases all over the world. Right? We believe that Proof of SQL becomes a standard that connects SQL language in a verifiable way whether you're running LLMs, whether you're running SQL, whether you're running a decentralized database, or obviously a centralized database in the future. <clears throat> you need a decentralized network, though. If you think about Proof of SQL, there's, there's really two, two things that happen with Proof of SQL. When you run queries or computation, you get results. You get an output. You also get a proof. Right? It creates a ZK proof of that actual computation. The challenge now is you need to have some type of decentralized network to come cons to consensus on that proof. The query result and the data being sent back to the client is what it actually is supposed to be. So this is a challenge that we needed to go out and solve. Today, we're really excited to announce that we are decentralizing Proof of SQL in space and time a step further. If you think about how we drive data computation, we have the database layer, which is space and time, a decentralized data warehouse built from the ground up. You have the provers, proof of SQL, generating proofs. The decentralized network that will, prove, that will verify the proofs that are being generated from proof of SQL is now going to be natively run in Chainlink through the decentralized Oracle networks to be able to verify that data hasn't been tampered with and that it's being proven. Can we get a round of applause? All right. Whether it's a smart contract, whether it's a large language model, whether it's different applications that are being built, whether it's a global financial service company or a Web3 game or a Web2 game, or enterprise applications, you need to be able to ensure that you can verify the computation that's coming out of a verifiable database. And this is the hard work that we're engaging with Chainlink in the announcement that we made today. Now, <clears throat> we believe in proof of SQL. We believe that alongside Chainlink, that it's going to close the gap to verify everything future. Right? We see a world in 10 years 
that if you're not running a verified computation, that you're not going to get a play in the market. It's going to be required. More and more, as I've already talked about, trust is moving to verification. <clears throat> so how do we accelerate this market? How do we ensure that more people can start building in this world? Right? Proof of SQL, space and time, decentralized database services can't just be for enterprises. It can't just be for the Microsofts of the world. It can't just be for the large banks. It has to be for everybody. And so proof of SQL is helping power a full developer stack in space and time. You can come out and you can visit our booth today or tomorrow, and you can look at the full developer stack in order to get up and start building applications very quickly. You can do this with no upfront costs. Right? You're able to start building today without huge commitments. You don't have to go spin up services. You don't have to go spin up servers. One of the sad things that we're seeing across the industry is that as people start to build decentralized applications, they're left on their own to go build this, meaning it's really expensive, right? You have to choose your blockchain. You have to have an RPC provider. You have to choose an indexer. You have to figure out how you're going to ETL that data to a database. You have to go pick a cloud provider, transactional database, an analytic database. Where are you going to store your data? What type of visualization tools are you going to use? How are you going to build out your AI ecosystem? And then ultimately, even if you do that all correctly, and you build it well, and you hire the data engineers to do all this, you still have to be able to return all of those results back to a smart contract. Space and time provides that full stack for you now with Chainlink where we can bring that data through tamper-proof indexing. We can prove origination of sources with a full developer stack and can return results back to the chain. But if a trustless future runs on proof of SQL, proof of SQL can't be exclu exclusive only to the space and time database. If it's truly going to be a standard in the industry for SQL verification, we can't wait for everyone to migrate all their data to the space and time database. So today, we're also announcing Bring Your Own Database. You have the ability now to run proof of SQL alongside centralized black box databases to be able to verify the results of those queries are accurate. Today, we're thrilled to talk about how we're working with Microsoft Fabric to enable proof of SQL to verify query results across blockchains, technology, um, LLMs, enterprise data use cases to directly connect those to smart contracts. We see a world where Google and AWS and Microsoft and Oracle and Snowflake and Teradata have the ability to verify query results using the proof from Proof of SQL, verify through the Chainlink verifiers in order to drive a more verifiable future. <clears throat> Look, what I hope you got out of this talk today is that space and time is building much more than a decentralized data warehouse, that we're building the future for a verifiable world that runs on database services that are decentralized that it's building on top of the Chainlink ecosystem to ensure that we have the verifier and a decentralized network moving forward. One of the things that I just want to call out before I wrap up here is that as we go out to the market and as we ensure that we can build a more verifiable future, that we want you to build with space and time in the Chainlink ecosystem. Our success is because you know, partly we built within Chainlink ecosystem. We didn't have to go build custom services. We're part of the Chainlink build program. If you want to get started by building applications within the Web3 ecosystem or building any application in the world, now you can join Chainlink's build program. You can have credits and services directly from space and time. If you're looking to build blockchain services in the Chainlink scale program, you can build direct integrated services with space and time to help you get up and running very easily, cost effectively, for the future. So look, I hope you have a great event. It's been um, a great, exciting experience with us to build with Chainlink over the last few years. We look forward to continually building more and more 
in the future on this verified roadmap that we have with Chainlink. And um, we look for you to join us. We invite you to join us. So come join us in this future as we build a verifiable data services for, for the world. Thank you.